morning friends. In the previous classes, we have learned how to design the razor using the Keynes method, modulus method and the NRL method. Now, let us see another topic today that is the feed metal volume. What is this feed metal volume? Right? One must remember that the razor or the feeder should take care of the casting shrinkage as well as its own shrinkage because during the solidification casting undergoes shrinkage and the razor also undergoes shrinkage. So, the razor has to take care of the casting shrinkage as well as its own shrinkage. Now, little volume of the liquid metal from the razor solidifies during the process of the feeding. Hence, the entire volume of the razor will not be available for the purpose of the feeding. So, this is clear. right? So, if we are designing a razor with a particular amount of volume of the liquid metal, this entire liquid metal will not be available for the purpose of the feeding because part of that will be freezing before it could what say uh, feed the casting. Thus, a feeder must compensate solidification shrinkage as shown by the following expression. Alpha into V c plus V r is equal to eta f into V r, where V c is the volume of the casting, V r is the volume of the razor. Alpha is the percentage volumetric shrinkage of the cast metal. So, different what say shrinkages for different metals we will be seeing in the next slide. Now, eta f is the razor efficiency which is defined as the ratio of feed metal available to the total volume of the razor. So, that is the definition for the razor efficiency. Here we can see alpha into V c plus V r is equal to eta f into V r. Here we can see this is the volume of the casting and this is the volume of the razor. This is multiplied by the percentage volumetric shrinkage means this is the total shrinkage of the casting as well as that of the razor. Now, this total shrinkage is to be compensated by the razor. Now, what is the razor? This is this is eta means this is the razor efficiency multiplied by the volume of the razor gives us the amount of liquid metal that is available for the purpose of feeding the casting as well as the razor. Now, these are the volumetric shrinkages of different cast metals. Pure aluminum volumetric shrinkage is 6.6 percent, aluminum 12 percent silicon alloy and the volumetric shrinkage is 3.8 percent, aluminum 4.5 percent copper alloy and the volumetric shrinkage is 6.3 percent, grey cast iron 0 to 1.8 percent, white cast iron 4 to 5.5 percent, plain carbon steels 2 to 2.5 to 4 percent, copper the volumetric shrinkage is 4.5 percent, tin branch the volumetric shrinkage is 5.5 percent, aluminum branch the volumetric shrinkage is 4 percent, magnesium the volumetric shrinkage is 4.2 percent, zinc and its volumetric shrinkage is 6.5 percent, lead and its volumetric shrinkage is 3.2 percent, gold and its volumetric shrinkage is 5.5 percent. So, these are the values of alpha the volumetric shrinkages for different cast metals or the alloys. Now, let us see another definition that is the razor efficiency. What is this razor efficiency? The razor efficiency is the ratio of the total feed metal available to the total volume of the razor. So, this total feed metal available for the purpose of feeding is always less than the total volume of the razor because part of the liquid metal in the razor solidifies before it could, it could feed the casting. That is why this feed metal volume is always less than the total volume of the casting. So, open cylindrical razors have a low efficiency less than 15 percent, whereas a cylind what is a razor with an exothermic cover and sleeve its uh, what is a razor efficiency will be more than 70 percent. 
The maximum efficiency of a razor depends on its shape and use of the feed aids. What is its shape and what are the feed aids? Are we using any feed aids? First of all, what are these feed aids? We are going to see very shortly these feed aids. Next one, razor efficiency can be improved by achieving directional solidification and modifying its design. What is this directional solidification? Let us quickly review. Before that, let us take a problem. Design an open side riser without any feeding gate like insulating sleeve, exothermic cover, etc. for a casting of dimensions 25 into 25 into 5 centimeters using modulus method. Check its adequacy when a the material of the casting is plain carbon steel and in the second case the material of the casting is pure aluminum means we have to design the razor for this simple casting whose what is the length is 25 centimeters, width is 25 centimeters and the thickness is 5 centimeters using modulus method. The methods that we have learnt in the modulus method and the NRL method that is the main guideline. Right? So, afterwards we need to check whether what we have designed is correct or not, what we have designed is sufficient or not, because different cast metals have different shrinkages. Unfortunately, in the modulus method and also in the NRL method, the material of the casting or the what is a uh, percentage shrinkage, percentage volumetric shrinkage does not come into picture, only the Keynes method takes care of the material of the casting. That is why when we are designing using what is a modulus method and NRL method, we need to cross check whether what we have designed is sufficient or not. So, that is the adequacy, check its adequacy means will it be sufficient or not. Solution, now volume of the casting we see is equal to 25 into 25 into 5 centimeters that is equal to 3000. 125 cubic centimeters. Surface area of the casting is equal to 25 into 25 such phases are 2 multiplied by 2 plus 4 into 25 into 25. These phases are there are 4 such phases. So, we are multiplying by 4 that is equal to 1750 square centimeters. So, this is the surface area of the casting. Now, modulus of the casting what, what is the modulus? ratio of the volume to the surface area. So, V c by S c, c what is here c stands for the casting that is equal to 3125 divided by 1750. Thus, the modulus of the casting is equal to 1.7857. So, this is the modulus of the casting. Next one, now we need to find out the modulus of the razor. Now, in the during the what say when we have learnt about the uh, what say design of the razor using the modulus method, we have seen that the modulus of the razor should be 1.2 times the modulus of the casting. Thus, MR the modulus of the razor is equal to 1.2 multiplied by MC the modulus of the casting that is equal to 1.2 into 1.7857 that is equal to 2.1429. So, this is the modulus of the riser. Now, but for a cylindrical riser that to when the diameter of the riser is equal to height of the riser, we have seen that the modulus of the cylind cylindrical riser is equal to d by 6. This we have already learnt when we are learning about the modulus method. Thus, this 2.1429 is equal to d by 6 or d is equal to 6 into 2.1429 that is equal to 12.8 centimeters. This is the diameter or the height of the razor. So, di diameter of the razor is equal to 12.8 centimeters and also the height of the razor is also the same 12.8 centimeters. Now, this is the what is the design of the razor or the dimensions of the razor we have obtained by the modulus method. Now, we need to cross check whether this design is sufficient for feeding the casting or not or what we need to check does the 
uh, what is a liquid metal present in this riser of size 12.5, 12.8 and 12.8 uh, uh, what is a size, will it be what is a will it have sufficient to liquid metal to feed the casting or not. So, we need to cross check. Case 1, material of the casting is plain carbon steel, the case 1. Now, this is the what is a expression we have learnt previously, alpha into V c plus V r is equal to eta f multiplied by V r, where this what is a uh, this expression on the left hand side represents the total strength case, whereas the expression on the right side represents the total liquid metal available for the feeding or we can say the expression on the left side indicates the demand, this much liquid metal, this much shrinkage is there or this much liquid metal is required. On the other hand, the right side expression tells us this much liquid metal is available for the purpose of the feeding. So, one side we can see this is the demand and the other side we can see the supply. So, always in the design of the razor, the supply should be more than the demand, then only that razor is uh, what say uh, sufficient for feeding the casting. Now, we need to find out these two expressions and check. Now, in this expression what is V c? It is the volume of the casting 3125 cubic centimeters, V r is the volume of the razor that is equal to 1572 cubic centimeters. Alpha is the volumetric string case that is for the plain carbon steels it is uh, say 2.5 to 4 percent. We are taking the maximum what say volumetric string case right uh, and eta f is the razor efficiency. For an open razor without any feeding aid the what say razor efficiency is 15 percent. Thus alpha into V c plus V r is equal to uh, alpha, alpha means 4 percent means that is 0 0.04 into this is the volume of the casting 3125 plus 1572 the volume of the razor is equal to 188 cubic centimeters means the right side sorry the left side expression or the demand for the liquid metal is 188 cubic centimeters. Similarly, let us calculate this right side expression eta f into V r, eta f into V r, eta f means what is that? That is the efficiency of the razor that is 15 percent. So, 0 0.15 into V r volume of the razor 1572 that is equal to 236 cubic centimeters. Now, the demand is 188 cubic centimeters whereas, the supply of the liquid metal is 236 cubic centimeters right. Supply is more than the demand, hence there is no chance for the shrinkage because uh, there is more liquid metal to what say compensate the shrinkage. So, there hence the size of the razor is adequate means it is sufficient. Now, let us see the second case. Material of the casting is pure aluminum. Again the same expression we need to calculate. Uh, this uh, left side this is alpha into V c plus V r, right side eta f into V r. So, this is the demand for the liquid metal and this is the supply of the liquid metal or available liquid metal. Now, again V c is the volume of the casting that is 3125 cubic centimeters, V r is the volume of the razor that is equal to 1572 cubic centimeters, alpha is the volumetric shrink case for pure aluminum it is 6.6 percent and eta f is the razor efficiency since the razor is an open one and without any feeding aid it is 15 percent. Now, uh, in this expression alpha into V c plus V r is equal to alpha that is equal to 0 0.066 into 3125 plus 1572 that is equal to 310 cubic centimeters. Now, let us calculate the right side expression eta f into V r is equal to eta f is point to what say 15 percent that is 0.15 into 1572 that is equal to 236 cubic centimeters. Now, let us see this is the what say total shrinkage or this is the demand for the liquid metal, this is the 
supply this much liquid metal is available for the purpose of the feeding. This is the demand, this is the supply. Means here the supply is less than the demand. This much 310 cubic centimeters shrinkage is there, but the available liquid metal is 236 cubic centimeters only. Means the shrinkage will be more than the what is a uh, liquid metal that is available for feeding. Hence, the size of the razor is not adequate, this is not sufficient, means uh, the casting requires still a, a bigger uh, razor. So, that is how we can cross check what we have designed is sufficient or not, what we have means the design of the razor is adequate or not, we can check using this expression. Now, let us see the methods of improving the razor efficiency. One is the directional solidification, second one is the by using the blind razors, third one is the modification of the razor design. So, first we will see the directional solidification, under that this directional solidification can be achieved by using insulating sleeves, Direc directional solidification can be achieved using chills, directional solidification can also be achieved using exothermic materials. First of all, quickly review what is this directional solidification. Here you can see this is the casting and this is the razor and here we can see one more casting and a razor is somewhere here. Now here we can see and this is the razor and this white color indicates the liquid metal, whereas this gray color indicates the solidified metal. Now the solidification is progressing in this direction and this is the razor and here there is liquid metal and the solidification is progressing in this direction. You can see so slowly more and more material will be solidified, more and more material will be solidified and it is going towards the razor. This is the directional solidification. Now let us see the second case, here we can see the razor is somewhere here. But you see this is the solidified metal, the grey colored one is the solidified metal, whereas the white one is the liquid metal and here we can see the red colored one say is this that is the center line of the casting. Now the solidification is progressing perpendicular to the center line of the casting. Now what happens? The razor is somewhere here, the razor is what say it has sufficient metal to feed the casting. But before it could feed the casting, this is slowly coming, see this portion is coming towards the center or the axis, similarly the bottom portion is progressing towards the axis, finally what will happen, somewhere there will be shrinkage will be there and the razor though it has got the sufficient liquid metal, it is not able to supply the liquid metal to that shrinkage area. Why? Because the direct what say solidification is progressing perpendicular to the axis of the casting. So, this is the progressing progressive solidification. Always the directional solidification is good for the casting. If we want there should not be any uh, what say shrinkage cavity, then there must be perfect directional solidification. Whereas, sometimes because of the geometry or because of the what say pouring temperature or the material of the casting, sometimes this progressive solidification dominates compared to the directional solidification. Generally, in any solidification, there will be directional solidification, there will be progressive solidification also, but the progressive solidification should be less, the directional solidification should be more. But if the progressive solidification is dominating, certainly that would reduce the efficiency of the razor. Though sufficient liquid metal is there, it is not able to flow into the casting because the solidified metal is obstructing the flow of the liquid metal into that portion where there is shrinkage. So, that is why directional solidification is very important. So, when we are designing the razor, we have to see that there is directional solidification, right. So, we have to remember that excessive of progressive solidification leads to shrinkage defect. So, now let us see how to achieve this directional solidification. Again we can see here casting whose geometry does not permit directional solidification. Here we can see this is the casting, the casting has got three sections, 
one section A, another section B and another section C and this is the razor. Now you can see the section of A has got the largest thickness whereas the section T C has got the moderate thickness and the section B has got the minimum thickness. Now what will happen? The liquid metal from the razor it has to feed the casting in this direction. Now solidification has to start from here slowly it has to progress towards the razor then only it will be able to feed the casting. Now what is happening in this case? The thickness of the first section A is larger than compared to the other two sections. So, the thickness of the center section, the middle section is minimum. So, this portion freezes quickly. Then what happens? This portion does not quick as fast as the section B. Now, because it has frozen, the liquid metal has to come and it has to feed this portion. Now, the liquid metal is not able to flow into section A, the first section. Why? Because the center section has already solidified. Now, how can we ensure the directional solidification? Certainly, this casting does not permit directional solidification. Now, let us see how to achieve the directional solidification. Using insulating sleeves, we can achieve the directional solidification. What are these insulating sleeves? Here we can see the same casting where uh, what say their directional solidification is very difficult to achieve. So, we are taking the same casting. Now, what we are doing here? This section is covered by the insulating sleeve. Now, what happens? Because of that, there will be less heat transfer to the mould valves. Because of that, this portion takes longer time for solidification. By the time this before this portion is solidified, this portion will be solidifying. So, first the uh, section A will be solidifying because of the presence of the insulating sleeve. Next only the second section will be solidifying next section C will be solidifying. Now, the liquid metal from the razor is able to flow into the initially into the section A, next next section B, section C slowly the solidification is progressing towards the razor. So, by using the insulating sleeves we can achieve the directional solidification. Next one using chills also we can achieve the directional solidification. What are these chills? Now, let us take the same casting where directional solidification was found to be difficult. Previously, we have seen somewhere here we have kept the insulating sleeve because of that it has taken longer time. So, before that because of that first section A has solidified faster than the directional solidification was possible. Now, instead of using insulating sleeve we can place a chill here. Chill is a steel block and this chill absorbs heat rapidly. Now, what is happening in this ca casting? The uh, what is the thickness of this section A is larger than the B and C. That is why this takes longer time for solidification before that section B can solidify. Now, we have to see that section A takes lesser time for solidification. After A uh, section A solidifies, next section B should solidify. After that section C should solidify. So, that is our what is a plan that is our aim. So, for that what we are doing? We are placing a chill here. Chill means a steel block close to the mould wall. Then what will happen? The sulf, what is a liquid metal comes in contact with this chill, the steel block. The steel block rapidly absorbs heat because of that this portion solidifies faster compared to the uh, previous case where there was no feed aid. Now, this takes lesser time compared to the other sections. Now, because now the section B solidifies, after that section C solidifies. Now, the liquid metal is able to, initially it is able to flow into A, next into B, next into C. Slowly, the solidification is progressing towards the razor. So, by placing chill also, we can achieve the directional solidification. Next one, by using exothermic materials also, we can achieve the directional solidification. What are these exothermic materials? These are the what is a mixtures of metal oxides, oxides of nickel, cobalt, copper, manganese, iron and aluminum. Now, these exothermic, exothermic mixtures are placed on the top of the razor. Then what will, what will happen? An exothermic reaction will be taking place on the top of the razor. 
Now, a typical exothermic compound is you can see Fe2O3 plus aluminum. When this mixture is placed on the top of the razor, now you see this reaction will be taking place. Now, right, you can see here this is the exothermic material, this much, right. And now, when, when it is placed on the top of the razor, the reaction will be like this 4 aluminum Al2O3 plus 8 Fe plus heat. Now, you see the temperature produced, it is very high temperature is produced. Now, what is the directional solidification first of all? Directional solidification means the point which is away from the razor must to solidify first. Then the solidification slowly it should propagate towards the razor and the razor should be the one which will be solidifying at the last. Now, we are increasing the razor to a very high temperature, then what will happen? Because of the high temperature of the razor, it will be taking longer time for solidification. So, because of this longer time for solidification, so more metal is available for feeding for a longer time. That is how it is able to the feed the liquid metal to the casting. And finally, because of this high temperature of the razor, finally it will be solidifying at the end. So, that is the directional solidification. So, by placing exothermic materials on the top of the razor also, we can achieve the directional solidification. Now, uh, the, there is a method, another method of improving razor efficiency is by using blind razor. What is this blind razor? Yes, this is the mold. You can see here, this is the pouring cup, pouring basin. This is the sprue. The molten metal will be flowing like this and this is the sprue well and this is the runner and this is the runner. Finally, this is the cavity and here of course, here there is a core and it flows around the core. Finally, it rises through the razor. An open razor is exposed to the atmosphere because of that there will be more heat transfer. So, to minimize this heat transfer, we can use a blind razor. Here you can see this is a blind razor, you can see. So, this uh, certainly this contains enough liquid metal, but it is not exposed to the atmosphere. Because of that, it will be in liquid state for a longer time. Because it is in a liquid state for a longer time, it can feed the casting for a longer time. Finally, it will be the one which will be solidifying at the last. So, casting will be solidifying first and this will be solidifying last. So, that is the directional solidification, right. By achieve, what say, by incorporating the blind razor also, we can achieve the directional solidification. Next one, by modifying the design of the razor, we can improve the razor's efficiency, right modification of the design. Again, there are five ways of modifying razor design. One is the multiple razoring. By using multiple razors, we can what say increase the razor efficiency. What is this multiple razoring? Right? A razor can feed the casting only up to a certain distance. Right? So, if we place a razor, it may have a what say sufficient volume of the liquid metal to feed the entire casting, but it can feed only up to a certain distance. Beyond that distance, though it contains more than sufficient liquid metal, it cannot feed the casting. So, this distance is known as the feeding distance of the razor. Based on the feeding distance, multiple razors have to be incorporated if required. So, once uh, we know that there is a feeding distance, once we know that uh, a razor can feed only up to a certain distance which is known as the feeding distance and if the length of the casting is more than the feeding distance, then what we have to do? We have to adopt multiple razors means we have to use two razors or three razors or even more depending upon the length of the casting, right. The feeding distance of a razor has to be calculated before finalizing the number of razor. Now, the question is, say there may be a long casting. So, how many razors does it require? How to know? First, we need to find out the feeding distance. What is the feeding distance of each razor? Then we can find out how many razors are required to feed that casting. So, by adopting multiple razors, we can increase the efficiency of the razor. Now, the, uh, now we are defining the feeding distance. 
the distance up to which a razor can feed the casting during solidification is known as feeding distance. Feeding distance has got two components. One component is the end effect and the other component is the razor effect. Let us see what are these end effects and the razor effects. End effect. Now, this is a casting. For example, a casting without a razor. Practically, it may not be a case, right? Generally, we make a casting, right, with the razors. Let us consider a casting without razor. Now, what is happening here? This portion, the extreme portion is more subjected to or solidification because it is more exposed to the mold wall. Similarly, the other end is also more exposed to the mold wall. So, here the solidification free what say uh, will be more here and this end. So, this center portion will be solidifying after some time, whereas this extreme end the left end and the right end will be solidifying faster. Now, what happens here because of that uh, while it is solidifying this portion will be supplying the liquid metal because the central, po central portion has got the liquid metal. So, that acts as the razor for the end portion. So, there is no shrinkage in this portion. Similarly, there is no shrinkage in this portion. Now, we can observe one thing. For the certain length of the casting without razor, there was no shrinkage. Why? Because the central portion is acting as the razor. So, the two ends of the casting have no shrinkage. This is due to the rapid solidification at the end and feeding from the inner portion of the casting. This phenomenon is known as the end effect, means there is no shrinkage at the end. End effect promotes a distance of 2.5 t, where t is the thickness of the section, t is the thickness of the section or the slab. Now, let us see another casting. This casting has a razor. Previously, we have seen that uh, 2.5 times the thickness was there without any shrinkage. Now, we are placing a razor, this is the razor. Now, to this the central portion, this is supplying the liquid metal and because of that, there is no shrinkage cavity. Previously, there was shrinkage cavity without razor. Now, there is no shrinkage cavity. Now, this length is 2t, where t is the thickness of the slab or thickness of the section. Why now here there is no shrinkage in this uh, portion, central portion? Here also there is no shrinkage. And what is its length? And if we measure, it will be 2t. And if we measure here, it will be 2t. Again, a distance of 2t, in a distance of 2t, there is no shrinkage. Why? Because we have placed the razor. Because of the presence of the razor, there is no shrinkage in that length. This is known as the razor effect, right. The middle portion of the casting has no shrinkage due to the presence of the razor. This is known as razor effect. Razor effect promotes a distance of 2t. Now, end effect we have already seen, end effect is 2.5 t and razor effect is 2 t. Then what is the total distance, feeding distance? Total feeding distance due to end effect and razor, razor effect is 2, 2 t plus 2.5 t that is equal to 4.5 t. So, this is the total feeding distance for a razor or when we use a razor. So, this much distance is covered by the razor and in this much distance there would not be any shrinkage. Now, here we can see the illustration and concept of the feeding distance. Now, feeding distance is the lay length of the casting where there would not be any shrinkage whether it is due to the end effect or due to the razor effect. Now, the question is how to uh, measure this feeding distance? Is it from the center of the razor or from the end of the razor? Right? So, the feeding distance here you can see this is the F t and this is the razor, this is the razor and this is the casting. Now, the feeding distance is always measured from the edge of the razor, you see from the edge of the razor to the farthest point in the casting right? Uh, or the uh, casting section 
to be fed by that razor, right. It starts from the edge of the razor to the farthest point in the casting that is fed by the razor. So, it starts from here and it ends here. So, this is the feeding distance. Now, again we will see razor zone length RZ del of a casting section without end effects. Suppose, let us assume there is no end effect, only razor effect is there. So, here the, this is the razor, this is a cylindrical razor, then what happens to the razor zone? So, razor zone will be a cylindrical portion. So, this must in this much portion there would not be any shrinkage. So, this is the razor zone. Now, let us see another case end zone length E z del of the casting means uh, if we again if we ignore the razor because of the end effect. So, this much portion there would not be any shrinkage. So, this is the end zone or this is the end zone length. Now, let us see a problem. A steel casting of size 40 into 25 into 10 centimeters is to be fed by a side riser. Calculate the feeding distance of the riser. So, we need to calculate the feeding distance of the riser. It is a simple problem. Thickness of the casting T is equal to 10 centimeters, this much. Now, what is feeding distance? 4.5 times the thickness of the slab or thickness of the casting that is equal to 4.5 into 10 that is equal to 45 centimeters. So, that is the feeding distance. It is a simple what is a uh, example to calculate the feeding distance. Now, feeding distance with two razors, influence of end effect and razor effect for a steel plate casting with two razors. Here we can see this is the casting, this is the casting and this is one razor and this is one razor. Suppose, if we have placed two razors for this uh, steel casting, what will be the total feeding distance? On one side there will be 4.5 t will be the feeding distance. Again this 4.5 t means it has got two components, say 2.5 times t is the end effect and 2 t is the razor effect. So, total this side of the razor there is a feeding distance of 4.5 t. Again this side there is a razor effect, what is how much is it? It is 2 t. So, this is 2 t. Again for this razor, again on one side there is razor effect, how much is that? That is 2 t. So, in the center from this razor to this razor there is 4 t distance of the feeding distance. Again from this razor, from this end up to here 2.5 t, 2 t is the razor effect and from here from the end to here 2.5 t is the end effect. So, the total feeding distance on this side is 4.5 t. Now, what is the total feeding distance when we are using two razors? It is 13 t. So, remember that when we are using two razors for a steel casting, the total feeding distance is 13 t. Now, let us see one more problem. Design top razoring system for a steel slab casting of size 60 into 10 into 5 centimeters using NRL method, Naval Research Laboratory method. Now, this is the solution. A single razor can feed a distance of 4.5 times the thickness of the casting. So, here it comes to be 22.5 centimeters on each side. Hence, the feeding distance on both the sides is equal to 45 centimeters. Thus, a single razor is not sufficient in this case. Number of razors required in this case is equal to 2. The casting can be considered as two sections each of 30 into 10 into 5 centimeters. Actually, the length of the casting is 60 centimeters but we are considering this as two sections, each section's uh, length is 30 centimeters. So, this is the one section, so other section is also of this much size only. So, if we design the razor for this section, so other section also will be requiring the same razor. Now, the shape factor for each section is equal to L plus W divided by T. So, that is equal to 30 plus 10 divided by 5 that is equal to 
8. Now, this is the NRL graph on the x axis we see the shape factor that is L plus W divided by T and on the y axis we see riser volume to casting volume ratio V R by V C. Now, just now we have seen the shape factor is 8. So, if we what say put this shape factor that is 8 on the x axis you see. So, this is the shape factor you draw a line such that it touches the graph. So, here it is touching. Now, from here we draw a horizontal line towards the V r by V c. So, this is the point where the line is touching the y axis. Now, it is something between 0.4 and 0.6. If we more approximate it will be say 0.45 and something more. So, it is uh, right shape factor for 8, 8 is equal to 0.55 right. Now, volume of the casting is equal to 30 into 10 into 5 that is equal to 1500 cubic what say centimeters. Volume of the riser V r is equal to now shape factor this is the V r by V c, V r by V c is equal to 0.55. So, V r by this what say V r by V c ratio 0.55 into 1500 that is equal to 825 cubic centimeters. Now, this is the NRL riser selection chart. Now, so this is the volume we got, volume of the riser is 825 cubic centimeters. Now, here we can see on the x axis we see the riser volume and in the y, on the y axis we see the riser height. Now, the riser volume is 825 cc cubic centimeters. So, we have to identify 825 cc on the x axis. So, this is the place we have approximated 825 cc. So, from here we have to draw a line vertically like this. Now, so these are all the different riser lines. This is the line corresponding to diameter 12.5 this line. This line is the one which corresponds to diameter 15. This is the line which corresponds to diameter 17.5 and this is the line which corresponds to diameter 20 and this is the line which corresponds to diameter 22.5. Now, we have to draw a line upwards from this uh, uh, 825 riser volume, then in this process that line will be intersecting all these riser lines. You see all these riser lines are what is intersected by this line. You see at this point it is intersecting, at this point it, it is intersecting, at this point, at this point also finally, at this point this vertical line is intersecting the different riser lines. Now, what happens? We have a rule that the diameter or the height by what is a diameter ratio should be between 0.5 to 1 means the h by d ratio should not be less than 0.5. Similarly, the h by d ratio should not be more than 1. Now, you see here we this line has intersected the 5 riser lines here, 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 here and here. Now, all these four lines are in, in all these cases the h by d ratio is less than 0.5 you see. As we come down the h by d ratio will be less than 0.5. Only in this case the h by d ratio is above 0.5 and less than 1. So, though we, we get the 5 values for the riser height only 1 is feasible this one. So, all these four are to be discarded. Now, what is the riser height in this case? It is 7.5. You see this is 5 and this is 10. So, this is 7.5. So, finally, only this value we will be choosing. Now, we get only one case that is the diameter is you see the diameter is for this line the diameter is 12.5. 12.5 and this is the height that is 7.5. So, the, the case one only one case 12.5 centimeters diameter and 7.5 centimeters height and remember we have considered only half of the casting. For half of the casting this is the required uh, what is a riser required. For the remaining half of the casting one more riser is required. So, two such risers are required. So, friends in this uh, lecture we have learned how to design the razor and razoring system 
using an oral method. We will continue in the next lecture. Thank you.